Welcome to the Writer's Journey Podcast. I'm Michael Laron, a science fiction and fantasy author on a journey to go from nobody to bestseller, and I'm documenting every step of the way. Tune in every week as I pull back the curtain on my writing life and how I'm building a writing career while working a full-time job, raising a family, and attending law school classes in the evenings. You can find show notes for this week's episode, a free starter library of my fiction, and much more at michaellaron.com. Hello and welcome to episode 122. 122 is a good number, and I titled this episode, The Episode Where I Level Up. (laughs) I don't know if that's actually true, but uh, I I have done something with my author business that um, does help me get to the next level. And so I'm going to talk about that and be transparent and... um, Uh, Maybe there's something interesting here for for those of you listening. So announcements real quick. I was a guest on the Inspirational Indie Author Interview Podcast with Howard Lovey. Uh, Howard is a fellow team member of the Alliance of Independent Authors, and we talked about a lot of different things. We actually got into some parts of my life and my career that... uh, I've never talked about anywhere else, and uh, Howard is uh, has, a, has a journalistic background, and he did a really great job with the interview. It's almost like um, like an NPR type interview. He he does a really really nice job. So I'm gonna link to it in the uh, show notes. Feel free to listen to that if you like. It's on Ally's website, and as you guys know, Ally is a nonprofit organization for authors whose goal is ethics and excellence in self publishing. That is the kind of organization that I'd love to be a part of, and so it's always cool when they feature me with stuff like that. So yeah, that was uh, definitely pretty cool. So check it out. And also, this week is the week. I know I've been teasing it. I know some of you are probably like, oh, he says it, but he's not going to do it. But no, the ARC copies of 150 self-publishing questions will go out this weekend. So if you have missed the boat, you didn't miss the boat. It's not too late to sign up. You can sign up at authorlevelup.com slash QA advance. That's authorlevelup.com slash QA advance. Copies will go out um, probably Saturday night. So uh, I'm announcing it on my YouTube channel on Friday at noon. So I want to give those people enough time to sign up and, and get onto the list. And so I may send send out access to the book in waves just to make sure I don't miss anybody. But uh, if you're on the list, rest assured, you're, you'll get the copy of the book here fairly soon. That's authorlevelup.com slash QA advance. And I will be giving away ebook copies as well as audiobook copies. So if you listen to it or read it, I would love a review. It would mean a lot to me um, if you could review the book. But um, if, if if it's not your cup of tea or if you don't get the value from it, then you don't have to leave a review. No, no pressure, no obligations. So the launch date of the book is going to be July 27th. And that leads me into the wins for the week. So the big win is that... Um, uh, Ally and I sat down on Friday and we uploaded the audiobook to Audible and Find Away Voices. So now we're just awaiting approval. So, oh man, this audiobook, I talked about it last week. It was a journey. <laughs> and um, I realized in the 11th hour that I made a mistake with um, uh, some of my audio settings. So I had to go back and re export everything like twice. So I was up until like one o'clock one night doing this. And so I'm just glad to have it done, glad to have it behind me. <laughs> so it usually takes Audible about 30 days, I think, to approve stuff. But I've heard that they've got a longer wait. So if you are an audiobook listener and you want to buy it on Audible, I will announce it when it goes live. But just know it may be maybe a few weeks. And this is my first time at the rodeo. So I don't know if Audible is going to come back and say, nope denied. (laughs) They might say, no, Michael, this is the worst thing we've ever heard in our lives. No, I don't think they're going to say that, but uh, sometimes you never know what the engineers will come back with. I've done a lot of audiobooks, and um, I've worked with professional narrators, and uh, even the even they get comments and feedback on uh, the books that they produce for me. So you just never know, but I, I'm fairly confident. And even if I don't, even if I, I don't pass the QA, I, I've got a guy I can call and he can help me out. So I'm not terribly worried about it. So that is a win for the week for sure. Um, and then the, the second win for the week is that I made some video quality upgrades at Author Level Up. So you guys know I upgrade this podcast from time to time. I do some incremental things that make the listening experience, I hope, a little bit better. And so I did some things over at Author Level Up that uh, I hope in the, in the coming weeks will make the videos more pleasant to watch and um, uh, help people get more value from them. So first thing I did was I, you know, when, when I'm, my basement flooded, I decided to kind of 
do some feng shui, get some things mixed around. And I, I got all new equipment down here, new furniture, all that stuff. I talked about that for a long time back in February, March. But I never got around to actually filming down here yet. And the main reason was because I have a DSLR camera, and it's a good camera. It's, it's a little bit of an older Canon, but it, it does the job just fine. Um, but I have a 50 millimeter lens. And my problem in the basement down here is that it, it's like it's like a giant rectangle. And the big problem is that I can't I can't ever get the camera far enough away from me with a 50 millimeter lens to make everything look good. Like I was trying to shoot on my couch and it literally looked like I was a serial killer. Like I, you know, I, like I had the camera all the way back up against the wall <laughs> and it literally was still too close. Like it's just, those lenses are weird. So I got a new lens. I got a 35 millimeter lens for my Canon camera and uh, I got, I got one of the budget brand lenses. I didn't know if it would work or not. And I tried it out the first couple times and it kind of sucked <laughs> to be honest with you. I was like, okay, this is definitely a budget brand lens. And so I, I just never got around to shooting. And so I just shot some stuff on my phone cause I just didn't, I didn't have the time or the mental capacity to sit down and try to troubleshoot this. And so I finally was in a, a headspace to do it. And so I did some research and Google searching and um, did some reading up on my camera and I finally figured it out. So I figured out how to get this 35 millimeter lens to work. So I can basically, I don't have to worry about the distance problem. This camera is, is a little, it's, it's, this lens is more suited for those types of situations. And so um, I'm, I'm able to shoot on my couch with the nice depth of field. And uh, I've got the lighting looking really good. I got the white balance finally figured out so I don't look super red anymore. You can actually see the purple wall behind me and uh, it looks very pleasant. So uh, this week, this Friday will be the first video uh, with the new settings. And uh, yeah, that's really cool. And then we'll talk a little bit more about some of the quality upgrades. Uh, later on in this episode, because that is what this episode is about. So lesson learned this week, you know, I've only got one lesson uh, that I'm going to share. And that is, um, I, I did some brushing up on my copywriting. So one of the one of the more successful things that I ever did in my author business, and, and this was this was a complete whim. It was something I saw a YouTuber do on their channel once. And I thought, Oh, that's really cool. It would be really easy to do is the, the, the YouTuber comes on to the, the video and then they say what the video is about and then it cuts to the intro. And then right after the intro, an ad for one of the, the YouTuber's products or something that they're trying to promote pops up and it's, it's a bunch of stock photos or stock images and it's the YouTuber narrating you know why, the, why you should buy the product and so on and so forth. And it's about 30 seconds and it ends with a link on where to buy the thing. You know, so I think that the example uh, that I, I borrowed was uh, Sean Cannell. He's got a, a couple of different YouTube channels. He's got uh, Think Media and uh, Video Influencers, and he did this on one of his channels. And he was just promoting like an affiliate link that he, you know, this this video was brought to you by VidIQ. And I thought it was really cool how he did it. And so I was like, oh, I'll try that with one of my videos. And I did that, and I, I just I bought it was like a seven dollar song, like a seven dollar stock audio, and I got. Um, uh, I, I already had a video subscription to like some stock video sites, so I got those for free. And um, I just cut a bunch of uh, different stock stock videos of like happy people reading books. And I put some like hip hop music under it. And then I just, I guess, narrated. I said, this video is brought to you by my book, Be a Writing Machine, the book for writers, blah, 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 blah. And then at the end, I just said, to get your copy today, visit authorlevelup.com slash machine. And I just, I did that. I, I, I didn't know what it would, I didn't think it would, anything would come out of it. And I have, I guess happened to put it on my Scrivener three review video, which is one of my most popular videos on my channel, which I didn't know it at the time, but it became one of my most popular videos. And then I also put it on my Scrivener versus Ulysses cage match, which was that video blew up. And then I also put it on, maybe I did. I don't think I put it on my learn Scrivener in 20 minutes video, but that video feeds into those other two videos. And so it was just kind of a random thing. And because those videos blew up and they get like thousands of views or they've gotten thousands of views or tens of thousands of views at this point, um, the sales of my beer writing machine just blew up. It's, it's kind of awesome, right? It was something that cost me like $20 to produce. <laughs> and so I thought, okay, I'm going to try this again, but I'm going to do it with, um, 
150 self-publishing questions answered. I'm just going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to get I'm going to get like uh, some happy music. I'm going to get stock fo- stock images and stock photos of happy people reading books and celebrating and then end it with a call to action and it would take like 30 seconds, you know. And so I did that and recorded it and uh, it was just kind of a fun return to why I'm kind of doing this on YouTube. It was just kind of fun. So that's just a, a tip for anyone who wants some really cheap promotion of uh, of your books. And you can do that on your podcast. You can do it on your YouTube channel. It doesn't really matter. So that was uh, the writing lesson was just reconnecting with that copywriting spirit and having to write a 30-second ad for one of my books. Kind of fun. So, all right, idea of the week. This is uh, something I think that people will, only a few people could pull this off. And, and, and it's, it's a few people, but if the right person does it, I think it could be explosive. And that is a book cover design YouTube channel. So it would be daily tips on Photoshop or how to design your own cover. Like what are the different techniques that, um, you know, an, a cover artist uses, like analyzing a cover, like picking some random cover off Amazon from the bestseller lists that are self-published and breaking down why that cover is successful. And then maybe even how to reverse engineer some things that best-selling covers are doing if you are designing your own cover or if you want to give clearer instructions to your cover designer. Um, it could also branch out into things like how do you design tasteful marketing materials? How do you use a site like Bookbrush or Canva to design marketing materials for your Facebook ads or your, uh, you know, whatever ads you're you're trying to do? I, I honestly think someone could destroy this. <laughs> they could absolutely destroy it because there's nothing out there right now. There is almost nothing for a person that wants to know the nuts and bolts of book cover design. You know, Derek Murphy, I think, uh, and, and I like Derek a lot. Derek has, Derek has a YouTube channel, but that's not what he focuses on. Derek is a cover designer. Um, he's done a few different videos that have got a lot of different views, a lot of views. And um, he did a few he did a few videos on YouTube where I think he he actually designed a cover from scratch and and he he actually has really good designs and so you could actually see how he did it and how intricate it is. But most people on YouTube don't aren't. aren't of his caliber. <laughs> Most people who are doing this, they're just authors that found out that maybe this is a good YouTube search. And so for our SEO perspective, they just pretend to be cover designers and they design these just gaudy, god awful looking covers and in <laughs> in Microsoft Word or something like that. You know, but I think if you had a professional cover designer, someone who actually designs good covers, and, and again there's only there's there's not that many out there. There's only really only a few good cover designers out there. All right. And I apologize. That's my, uh, uh, water going on and off. <laughs> so if, if, if you got the, you got to get the right person and then it would need to be a mixture of on-screen personality and screen share videos. So you can't just be somebody that does screen shares. You actually have to be on camera and you've got to mix that, you know, and you've got to have engaging content. The videos could be five, 10 minutes long max, and as long as there's value, oh man, I mean, just think about the value that people would get from a channel like this. You know, uh, Joel Friedlander, if you've ever heard of him, he is a book cover designer. And um, he's also, a, just, he, 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 he writes a lot of good books and um, offers a lot of really interesting perspectives on book cover design and formatting. For a very long time on his website, I think it's joelfriedlander.com, he did a monthly segment on his blog and it was called the Ebook Cover Awards. And he would dissect self-published covers and he would give the gold stars to the authors that had really good covers. And then he would, uh, you know, critique the covers that maybe didn't do very well. And you could submit your cover for Joel to take a look at. And that was a very popular segment. You know, a lot of people looked at that. And I think that would be really cool if you could find a way to bring that onto YouTube. And I think it could even be cooler if there was a cover designer and a formatter that teamed up to where the channel was half book cover design and half formatting because the two of those go together quite well, right? Because a book book cover design, book cover designer is going to need to know formatting specs. And I, I think both of them are extremely visual, like formatting is best taught visually. Oh man, that is a great idea. Somebody steal that, and I will. I will. I will be the first subscriber. <laughs> it's not me though. I'm, and I'm not the one to do that. So, all right. So, I wanted to talk about topic of the week. So, I, t- I titled this uh, episode "Why I Leveled Up," and so the reason I, I I 
claim that is because I decided to hire a video editor for my YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, it, it was something I, I, I reflected on for a couple weeks and I realized that now is the right time to do it. And um, I wanted to talk a little bit why I decided to do that. And um, maybe it will be helpful to some of you as you get further down your career and you realize, you know, maybe I do need to get some help and maybe it'll teach teach you what to look for. Um, or maybe I could be completely off base. I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> but I've got a lot of things going on right now. Uh, I've got law school classes coming up in the fall. If I go back, um, they're, they're wanting me to go back in person. And I don't know that I'm ready to do that yet. So um, if there's not an all online alternative, I might not go back. I might skip a semester until uh, all the pandemic stuff shakes out. But we'll see. All right. But either way, the fall, as I've always said, is the most stressful semester for me. Um, it's just very, very difficult. A lot of work. And I've got some insurance classes coming up in August that I'm teaching. Um, I've got uh, this book with Ally that I'm working on launching. I'm also doing some additional work for Ally. I'm now their outreach manager. So it's kind of my job to go out and reach out to companies and businesses to promote Ally. And so that's taking up, up some additional time. Um, fortunately, though, that that is a paid paid gig, but it is taking up some time. Um, I've got this sales report tool that I'm working on. And one of the big things that I learned with courses is that courses always take more time than you think they're going to take. And I learned I learned a very valuable lesson with my very first course, Right to Market, off of levelup.com slash right to market, if you're interested. Um, it took me so long that it took me away from my YouTube channel. And I don't want that to happen again as I start working on this sales report tool. And so I want to make sure that, you know, off of level up is, is the, it's my most vulnerable weakness at, you know, at this point. Um, because if something were to happen, heaven forbid, you know, disaster, catastrophe, and I don't have any YouTube channel videos slotted, it, it you know, I, I could go a week without having a video. And that's, that's not acceptable to me. And so I need to do a better job of batching videos in the future so that I've got videos out. So if I get sick one week or two weeks, I don't, I don't have to worry about YouTube. Uh, I don't have to worry about shooting when I'm sick. I've done that and that's not very much fun. And so thinking about all the things that are on my plate right now, at least for the next three to four months, I decided, you know, I'd I got a lot of balls. You know, I'm a professional juggler. <laughs> That's probably a better job title than professional author. I'm a professional juggler, and um, I, I want to make sure I don't drop any balls in the last half of the year. And so I decided to do it, you know, and, and it, it may not be forever, but it will certainly be through the end of the year, um, you know, during my busy seasons. Uh, I know how to edit videos. I can edit them very quickly. But one of the things that I've always been very keenly aware of is that when I'm editing a video, it's taking me away from so many things, right? And so I decided to break down and, and get a video editor. Uh, I'm fortunate at the point where I can, you know, I can afford this. And so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go for it. And so I actually put a posting up on a site called Upwork and I kind of explain what I wanted and what I was looking for. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not looking for premium video editors. I'm not looking for the you know, entry level video editors. I'm just looking for somebody that's got enough experience to do what I need them to do, which is edit some basic videos, um, put some visual graphics and stuff up on the screen and uh, make the video engaging so that I can boost my YouTube watch time so that viewers will watch me longer and that viewers will get more out of the video. Right. And so I put up a put up a job posting and um, I found a guy who uh, uh, was fairly qual fairly qualified and uh, has done a lot of work like this in the past. And he seemed fairly interested in the channel and uh, has done a lot of work that uh, is very similar. So uh, I said, OK, let's 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 explore this and let's do uh, let's do a test run and, and let's see how you do on this first video. And uh, we'll go from there. You know, and so um, I sent basically I shot the video. And then I basically I've done this before. I hired an editor last you know, in the fall of 2008 for a couple of videos. And um, I'll talk maybe a little bit more about that later. So I, I've worked with an editor in the past, but never for like an extended run of time. And so I said, OK, let's do a test run. Let's see how you do on this video. And then we can we can kind of take it from there. And I think one of the things that I've always uh, struggled with is when to know when it's time to outsource. You know, I've always said here on this on this show, don't outsource anything you can't automate first or at least make more efficient. And as I look at my business, 
YouTube editing is the one thing I can't streamline. It's, you know, at least with podcast editing, like I can turn on the microphone and talk. And when I'm done, I can click a button and I, I have all of my audio levels done, all everything that needs to be done for you guys to be able to hear it <laughs> and, it, you know, enjoy it and have the audio be consistent from episode to episode. I don't have to worry about it. You know, I, I've in some ways automated my podcasts, so I don't have to worry about that as much. Um, I can automate a lot of things. I can automate, you know, my email. I can automate things, other things in my business, but I just cannot automate anything as it pertains to video editing. And when I think about YouTube, one, I've got to plan the videos. I can't just turn on the camera and talk. I've actually got to do market research, figure out what viewers are searching for, um, what my video needs to have, how to answer their questions. It's more work than it, than it, than it sounds like, right? And then I've got to shoot the video, which I usually have to wake up at 5.30 in the morning, got to put on makeup, I come down to my studio, set everything up, and then shoot. And that takes about hour and a half, two hours to shoot maybe two or three videos uh, that are probably 10, 15 minutes each. And then I've got to upload everything and then I've got to edit it. And then I've got to upload it to YouTube, which takes takes a little bit of time. So it, it there's a lot of steps and there's very little that I can automate. And I am really, really looking forward to the day when artificial intelligence can help us with this. But as it stands today, it's the one area of my business I can't automate. And so I've tried to tried to hold off on doing anything with video editing until maybe there were some solutions out there, but I still think we're probably five, seven years away from something that can help help with this process, right? So, um, you know, I'm not I'm not rah rah about outsourcing. I know that there's some people out there that say, well, you got to outsource. You, you know, you you got to do it. 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 You got to do it right now, or you're going to lose money. <laughs> you know, there's some people that are just super gung ho about it, and I get it. Um, but I, I'm I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you need to do this because I recognize that most of you can't even get to this point, right? And so I, I recognize that I'm somewhat fortunate that I have the ability to do this. Um, but I resisted it for a long time because, you know, I just wanted to spend my money in other areas. But like I said, I don't want to drop any balls. And so um, another misconception, and this is something that I learned the last time around, I had an editor um, in the fall semester of my first year in law school just because I wanted to focus on um, classes and all that stuff. And I thought it was going to save me a lot of time. You know, I thought, okay, I'm going to edit. I'm going to I'm going to hire somebody to edit my videos and then, you know, they can upload it to YouTube and blah, blah, blah. And what I found is that I actually didn't save a whole lot of time, at least in the beginning. So what I found was that um, when I, when I work with the editor, I had to plan out the video as usual. But I got the nice part was that I got to spend more time planning. I got, I got to kind of plan at my own pace, which was kind of nice. Like before, I felt like I always had to plan real quickly and then shoot. Now I can just kind of take my time because I know that the editor is going to do the editing, right? So I had to plan the video, and then I, have, I had to actually give instructions to the editor. So I had to give him a Word doc with the script or an outline of the video and tell him, what needs to be done? So what kind of transitions do I want? What kind of effects do I want? What kind of stock images do I want? Um, there were particular cues, like recurring things that I would do in the videos that he needed to know about. So what I found is that I, I spent a fair amount of time in the very beginning while I was training him to get to the point where um, he could edit the videos and not have it without me really having to worry about it. But that took like two weeks. You know, it took two or three weeks and a couple of different videos and back and forth because you got to watch the draft of the video that they edit, make recommendations, then watch the draft again, make recommendations until you get it right. And so what I found is that I didn't really save a whole lot of time. In fact, it actually took me more time to train and, and get the person up to speed with my brand and the kind of style that I was looking for and, and so on and so forth. And so I didn't really save a whole lot of time at all. And so I learned that the last time around, um, and I only work with him for maybe six videos, seven videos, and then I, I, you know, the fall semester was over, so I didn't really need him anymore. Um, but now as I, as I go into this, I thought, okay, I, I, I've learned some things. We're going to approach this a little bit differently. And how I'm going to approach it is I know that it's going to take me a lot of time in the very beginning to train. So I put together some documents, um, you know, we, we had some back and forth on what I was looking for, and uh, this guy's a pretty quick learner. So 
it, but it took me a while to, to put all that stuff together, you know? Like, it took me probably the same, it pro it's probably going to take me more time to produce this one video than it would than it would be if I if I did it myself. And some people would say, well, if I can just do it myself, I'll just do it. But if I can get him to the point where he knows exactly what to do when he sees something, that's perfect, you know? So it's kind of like an example I gave um, around the around the end of the year. So I, uh, it's my job to, to vacuum all the floors in my house. And um, when I vacuum, if I do it right, it takes me about 30 minutes. No, maybe a little bit longer, like 45 minutes. So I got to vacuum the basement, got to vacuum the first floor and the bedrooms and all that. And if I actually take my time and do it right, it takes about 45 minutes. And at the end of the year for Christmas, I got my wife um, one of those little robo vacuums. And um, it was on sale, so I, I got one for her. And so every night at midnight, the little vacuum comes on and it, it vacuums the first floor of our house. So it saves me time in vacuuming. But when I first got the vacuum, I actually had to spend a lot of time learning how it worked because it can get stuck on stuff. Like if there's a toy on the floor and it rolls over it, it'll get stuck. Or uh, I, we have two different couches in my living room, and one of the couches, it can go under and sweep with no problem. But the other couch, if it goes under it, it gets stuck every time. So I had to figure out a way to block it from going underneath the, the wrong couch, right? There's like all these little things that you have to think about every night before I go to bed to prepare for the, the robot to come on. And it's kind of like that. Like it took me probably one to two weeks to get familiar with the vacuum and how it worked to be able to think like it so that I could turn it on at night and know that it wasn't going to get stuck, <laughs> you know, that I wouldn't find it under the couch. And when I woke up the next morning, it's kind of like that, you know, you, you, you have to train and, and, and figure out what the new normal is before you can get to a point where, um, you know, the, the robot can do its thing. It's the same thing with editing. And so uh, my goal as I approached this was to provide clarity to the editor. How can I provide clarity in terms of what is it that I need him to do? How is it that I need him to do it? How can, how do we get mutual agreement on um, how long it's going to take him? Where do I upload the files? Where does he upload the files when he's done? Um, you know, and, and there's, there's going to be some back and forth for the first couple weeks, but um, hopefully if this, if this first video goes well, you guys should see it on the channel next week. So next week will be the week that you see it. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I had to talk about this week. I, I recognize that uh, it was a little bit abstract, <laughs> but um, you know, as you progress in your career and you have a lot of things in the air and um, you have the ability to do it, you know, it, it, it makes sense to outsource and it makes sense to bring on someone who can help you because now the benefit of all this is that I can, I can hire, I can hire the editor I can spend more time being strategic, which is what I do best. I'm, I'm at my very best when I'm planning and thinking futuristically, right? So now what I can do is do some things that I haven't been able to do on YouTube, which is I can do some more market research. I can maybe start to do some content that I, I guess haven't been able to do. Like one thing I really want to get back into doing is writing app reviews, but I haven't been able to do that because those videos take me a lot of time. And so now, I, you know, if this works out, I can start doing those videos again. Um, and those videos historically drive a lot of traffic and new subscribers to my channel. So if I do some writing app review videos or some videos that I know people are searching for and I knock them out of the park instead of just doing them very quickly just to be able to get them done, I think that's going to add value and that'll grow my revenue on my channel. Um, it'll be more of a pleasant experience for my subscribers and it'll bring new subscribers into the Author Level Up ecosystem, which will allow me to get some more advantages and, and go on from there. But I, I think the key is... Um, when I, when I decided to hire the editor, I, 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 I said, I'm not going to hire anybody that's not going to bring in some sort of ROI. So meaning if I do decide to hire somebody, I've got to double down on my YouTube strategy, which you guys know, I said at the very beginning of the year, or at least um, at the beginning of the pandemic stuff, that I would be doubling down on my YouTube presence over the next few months. And I said, I wasn't going to do it right away. So this is, this is taking that baby step to be able to do that. And Maybe that means being able to go twice a week on YouTube. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, but this is the first step as I think about pivoting my business, right? So I talked about how audio, I think, will be a very important thing for me moving forward. And over the past few months, I got my first audiobook recorded. 
you know? And so I said that video would be an important part of my strategy moving forward. And now I'm taking some steps to um, move myself forward in the video arena. And so this is what pivoting looks like. This is what self-transformation looks like. Sometimes it's weird. Sometimes it doesn't feel like from the outside in, it's like, what is this guy doing? You know, he's doing all these different things, but it's because I'm trying to put my business in a better position um, coming out of all these economic hard times to do a little bit better. Maybe I will succeed in some areas. Maybe I won't succeed in other areas, but you've got to pivot. I, well, the last thing I want to do is just sit here and romanticize how I'm doing business, you know, because then I'm going to wake up one morning and, and the whole world is going to have passed me by, <laughs> which by the way, if anyone's interested, I picked up a really interesting book this morning. It's called, I think it's called The Signals Are Talking. I think it's by, the author's name is Amy Weber, and she is a quantitative futurist. So I don't really know what the book is about other than it's it's basically about how to identify signals uh, from the future. So how to identify trends that are going to become more popular in the future. And you guys know I love futurism. I, I love thinking strategically and, and looking ahead to the future. And so uh, I'll drop an affiliate link to that book if anyone is interested in picking that up because I know some of you are interested in that as well. So anyway, that is this week's episode, a little bit shorter than usual. Um, don't forget that you can get your copy of um, 150 self-publishing questions answered in ebook and audio as advanced review copies, if you dare, at authorlevelup.com slash QA advance. That's authorlevelup.com slash QA advance. And you know what? Since we're since we're ending this episode so early, I'm going to throw in another five-minute uh, audiobook demo from the audiobook. So I'll play out with uh, an audiobook. I'll, I'll play out from the introduction, first five minutes of the book, and I uh, hope you enjoy it. So hope everyone is staying healthy, happy, and sane, and I'll holler at you next week. 150 Self-Publishing Questions Answered Allies, Writing, Publishing, and Book Marketing Tips for Authors and Poets Publishing Guides for Indie Authors, Book 5 Written and Read by M. L. Ron Copyright 2020 by M. L. Ron Production Copyright 2020 by M. L. Ron What You Will Learn in This Book Introduction by M. L. Ron Every writer's journey begins with a question. Many questions, actually. What's my first step? How do I publish a book? How do I write it? How do I sell it? As an aspiring writer, I had many questions. The more answers I found, the more questions I had. I learned the hard way that not every answer you find is a good one. In fact, I found a lot of bad advice. Sometimes, I didn't know if advice was good or bad. Enter the Alliance of Independent Authors, Ally for short. I discovered Ally in 2012 while searching for resources on how to self-publish my first book. I was intrigued by Ally's description as a global nonprofit association for authors with a mission of ethics and excellence in self-publishing. I also loved how Ally shone a light on shady companies who tried to take advantage of fledgling writers like me. I was also intrigued by the sheer amount of helpful information they provided to writers for free. Blogs, books podcasts, conferences, a Facebook group, and so much more. After reading a few blog articles, I became a member. After meeting with Allies director Orna Ross, I found her enthusiasm and passion for helping writers infectious. All these years later, I am still a member of Ally because I believe in the organization's mission. I also appreciate and admire the Ally member community, ambitious, self-published writers trying to help one another. I've been a part of many writing communities, but there isn't one quite like Ally. Through being a member and experiencing the benefits for myself to further my own author business, I became a believer in Ally's ability to assist any writer to become the creative director of their books and their business. I have made it a focus to help as many people learn about Ally as possible because I believe Ally can help them, just like it helped me when I was an aspiring writer with no clue how to write or publish a book. A little about Ally, a little about me. In the publishing community, I'm known as Michael Laron. As I write this, I'm Ally's outreach manager. Since Ally's HQ is in the United Kingdom, with members all over the world, 
Like its other ambassadors, I spread the good word about Ally to all my friends in my country and state, and I encourage businesses that have services for writers to consider joining Ally's roster of approved services. Since 2018, I have co-hosted the hashtag Ask Ally member Q&A Facebook live show and podcast with Orna, where we answer our members' most burning publishing questions every month. Since its inception in 2012, this question and answer session has solved more than a thousand member problems in publishing, writing, marketing, and more. The podcast is part of the hashtag Ask Ally campaign, which pledges to answer any question any self-publishing author might have using its extensive network of blog posts, podcast episodes, videos, and books. This program is addressed to paying Ally members who can submit their question through a form in the member zone of the Ally website. However, we publish the audio and video of the show online for free so that any self-publisher may listen and view, learning from our members' experiences. There are few questions that Ally hasn't seen and heard. For any questions that Orna and I can't answer, we have world-class advisors to draw from who have immense influence and expertise in publishing. As for me and why I'm qualified to write this book, I've written over 50 books of science fiction and fantasy and nonfiction for writers. I also host a popular weekly YouTube channel for writers called Author Level Up that, at the time of this writing, has over 25,000 subscribers, nearly 1 million views, and over 2 million minutes watched per year. Every minute of every day, someone is watching one of my writing videos on YouTube. I built my writing business while working a full-time job in insurance, raising a family, and attending law school classes in the evenings. I also have a weekly podcast called The Writer's Journey that chronicles my experiences as a working writer and a daily podcast called Writing Tip of the Day that provides a crisp writing tip in just two to three minutes. I share my experiences and advice I've learned because I want to help writers succeed. But enough about me. Let's talk about you and what you're going to learn in this book. Thanks for joining me this week. If you enjoyed this episode, you'll enjoy my backlist episodes at michaelaron.com slash podcast. For your free starter library of my favorite novels, join my fan club by visiting michaelaron.com slash fan club. If you're a writer and want to connect with me further, check out my YouTube channel, Author Level Up, for helpful writing advice at authorlevelup.com. Thanks for listening, and I'll be back next week.